the writer Thoreau has a great saying, you know, disobedience is the, the, the true foundation of liberty and, and the obedient shall be slaves. Laird Hamilton, who is one of the world's most iconic figures in surfing history, is on the mic today. And here he's talking about a few things that I want to point out before we go into the high performance tip. Laird points out that a lot of top level high performers have been doing it for years and years and years. A lot of them, like himself, actually started when they were very young. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't become a high performer or you can't maximize your high performance later in age. What it just means is that, especially for athletes, that often starts at a younger age. Now, that being said, I didn't start my journey at a younger age. I was actually in my mid-20s when I started being an entrepreneur and traveling the world and maximizing on all these adventures. I think the point that he makes that's really key here is that it takes a while to become a pro. It takes 10 years to become black belt on average. It takes a decade to be a super entrepreneur, right? Minimum. It takes years of practice and know-how. Don't take that as uh, something that will stop you. Take this as an investment for the long game. And if you focus on the long game, a lot of times our perspective shifts, our anxiety drops, and we can focus on what's key and important. Now, another thing that Laird points out is he said it does take a level of intelligence to do things that are dangerous. So keep your ears open in this one, because I think it's true. You've got to be an intelligent person to do the dangerous things. And I think what he really means is the calculated risks that one needs to take in order to be safe and amidst that danger. And then he also touches on the importance of being a creator and an artist in your field. And I think all of us, once we start to become pro, once we start to become high performers, once we start to become um, really skilled in our trade, the time of learning drops. It doesn't mean you stop learning, but that declines. And the time of creation massively increases. Okay, you guys, let's hop into it with one of the world's most popular big wave surfers and surf innovators, Laird Hamilton. I start, you know, I grew up in Hawaii and and was was in the ocean from a, not far after uh, I could walk, and so yeah. I I was raised in in the ocean and in the sports arena. You know, when you look at, at a lot of top level people in sports that kind of transcend their sports or go to these high levels of sports. It's, it's usually based on, on that they did it from the beginning and they did it all day long, every day for their entire life. Right. Uh, and, and that's, and that's true in my case. Uh, I started at a really young age. I was in a really great environment for it. Everybody, all the men I looked up to were watermen, which means that you could dive and sail and fish and surf and, paddle and you could do all the, you know, that you were really uh, well versed in. And in my case, being in Hawaii and some of the most rugged oceans in the world, uh, you're well versed at being in those environments. And, and so that's my back. That's how I started. And then I had a, I think I, I have a good disposition to do dangerous things, a little, you know, maybe, you know, they describe it as a daredevil or people like to say it's, you know, that you don't have fear and all that. I, 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 I don't like that. I usually like to say it, it takes a level of intelligence to be able to do things that are dangerous, especially on a regular basis. Right. Um, and, and for your whole life, we hope that that's a reflection of maybe of your fear ultimately. So, so yeah, I, I, I evolved. My dad was a surfer, um, a great surfer in his, in his uh, era. Uh, I had that as an example and kind of, he was young. So him and I were pretty competitive you know, because I got to watch him, I got to kind of make a decision about which direction I wanted to go. Surfing is a very unique sport in that you don't necessarily have to be, uh, or you don't have to participate, you know, in the, in the structure of the organized structure of it. You can right. be an artist. It's a little bit like dance or, you know, or, or you could be, you know, mountain climbing, you know, you could be mountain climbing. I mean, these, some of these individual sports, you can really kind of go off on your own and really kind of forge your own way yeah. You know, and, and even musicians do that, you know, where they don't have to, they're not stuck in a structure. And so I think I, I decided to do that at a very young age. And, uh, and that gave me the freedom to really be more exploratory. 
I think yeah. I was able to kind of do things my own way, how I wanted, when I wanted, which, you know, wasn't always easy because it's hard to convince people to support you, um, you know, when you're doing things how you want, when you want. Um, and it's not also in the, the constraints of, of the normal organized way of voting about it. So, you know, I, I have a very unorthodox history and approach. And I think that led um, that's led to my success. And also it's it's allowed me the fortune to be able to kind of be more creative and and be more and more and ultimately be innovative. Growing up in Hawaii, the way I did, I think also gave me a little bit of I had a little bit of a rub going to school and and where we lived, I was a little bit of an outcast. And so that allowed me to uh, fortunate kind of attribute that, you know, you, you, you don't spend so much time being concerned about what people think, um, mm -hmm. which can inhibit you a lot of times from being creative and adventurous and going against the flow. And the writer Thoreau has a great saying, you know, disobedience is the, the, the true foundation of liberty and, and the obedient shall be slaves. So, you know, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, I think I think I have a, a, a certain disobedience in me, which has has actually worked to my benefit, just given the platform and, and some of those unique things that I was exposed to. So we've got a quick look on how Laird Hamilton sees himself and how his disobedience made him who he is today. The question I want to leave you with is, how has your obedience made you a slave? If you like what you're hearing and you want to make sure you don't miss any of these tips, please subscribe, leave us a review, and share with your friends. We'll see you on the next episode.